Hello everyone, my name is Shem and welcome to Vive X Kitchen. So today we have an interesting topic. It's about exporting depth maps from um, normal photographs. If you're familiar with the depth maps when you are exporting uh, renders from any 3D software, uh, you can also export a Z depth map which allows you to play later with a lens blur, you know, can just make stuff in the back uh, more blur than the front one and so on. Today we are going to apply the same but with just a photograph using machine learning. I came across uh, one of these repositories which is uh, also an implementation of one of the papers for estimating um, the depth from a single image, which is actually works somehow like a pex to pex. It's a famous uh, solution. So it works like you have an A and B, so you have to give it uh, A as an input and then you get a result of B. And of course you have to train it on a lot of A's and a lot of B's. Like everything with its matching. So for example, as you can, as you can see here, we have like uh, just drawing of blocks and then we have uh, the output as buildings. And uh, the same with Google Maps. You can just give it a, an image of Google Maps and then you can get the result of the streets just written, uh, drawn like this. You can have black and white to color. So it's a famous solution. It's been out since a while. And here's more application of it. So this paper uh, submitted on December 2018, like almost the beginning of this year. And here's the code for it. So as you can see, like the last commit was last month. So it's kind of updated somehow and 10 months ago uh, the first commit so i expect it's like almost the recent uh, research that we can work with and that's what you get out of it so you have an input image and then you have a generated image for the z depths or like it's kind of a heat map but in the end it's a, it's a depth map and uh, we are going to try out this code and see how can we implement it into production so to make it to work you need to have keras tensorflow coda um, this, this, um, this requirements, I think it's more for training data, if you want to train your own model again, but I like that you're also providing the pre-trained models. Uh, and you also need some packages for um, maybe visualizing if you want to see how the output looks like and so on. There's even a nice demo with OpenGL. Um, I would like to start with just cloning uh, the repository we have and let's just get started. Git bash, git clone, and then that's the link. Okay, so let's wait until it's um, cloning it. Meanwhile, we can see uh, what else do we need. I already installed Keras, TensorFlow, TensorFlow, and Coda. Of course, you can get the same by just going to CMD, writing pip, install, and for example, if we need TensorFlow, 113 you have to write down like uh, pip install tensor flow gpu or if you're not using gpu you can just use the normal, normal tensor flow but of course gpu because it would be much much slower in the normal cpu and then you add uh, the version that you want for example like here in tensor flow you need to add also one more zero and that's it and if you already have an existing tensor flow version and you need to uninstall it and install the other one you can just use upgrade so it will delete the old one and install a new one. So anyways, I have already my environment set it up and everything's working fine, so I don't have to read it. Um, okay, here, after downloading the pre-trained model, I have to download one of these, which I already did. So I will just go here and um, get the downloaded model. That's it. It's the same. If you click here, it will download it for you and you just put it in the folder and you can start running a python test so it will just make some images estimating it and there's a qt demo so let's just go directly to the demo and i can just shift right click uh, i hit powershell so i will go with command line cmd oops cmd cd here and I would like to have Python and then it was demo the Pi and that's what's happening right now. So it's basically uh, loading an image and generating or estimating the depth map for it and showing it an OpenGL uh, QT window. 
and I will show you later how can we use this into production and maybe later we can create actually a plugin or something for it inside After Effects or Photoshop. So that's how it looks like. Uh, as you can see, there's actually a depth. That's a point cloud. So you can still zoom in, oh, you can zoom in, turn around. So it's like projecting it. So that's, that's the estimated uh, depth map. Um, that's part of the Ken Burns uh, effect. If you're familiar with the Ken Burns effect, okay. Uh, while scrolling on Facebook, you, most of the time you can see some 3D images, people like uh, looking around and you just move around when you're scrolling, you see the images moving and so on. That's what's called Ken, Ken Burns. Um, part of it, like you can see here, with, there is a gap. This one also being filled with uh, some in-paint algorithm to fill the gaps between the pixels, trying to estimate what could fit here. Um, and that's the image, that's the input, and that's what you get as an output. So how could this one be beneficial for production? Let's say that you have a footage, you have an image, for example, with like this, and you want to make like um, depths of field. In that case, we can uh, run the other demo which actually called python test.py and I will show you what I'm going to do. Um, so python test.py so using TensorFlow backend okay loading the model and what's happening actually here is there is an example folder where are these are examples images so um, it will show it in the end as a stack of depth map and the output like um, A and B. So you can see the, the original image and the estimated depth map for it. Uh, what I would like to do is to export the estimated data or the estimated image and test it um, inside After Effects for instance. So let me just wait until it's um, completing the estimation. So that's the output. Um, as you can see here, that's like the input image, that's the depth map and so on and so on. Um, now I need to save this image and to be honest, I don't want to do it in the dirty way, just like cropping it from each image of these. So we will just hack a little bit into the code. So let's jump into Sublime, grabbing the test file here. Oops grabbing this file and let's see first thing I would like to do is to um, just comment all of these because I'm not going to use it for now I don't need any arguments so far but you can just keep it I don't need this one I need to load the model nope so load images I don't need to predict anything and here we are gonna play around oops so again uh, I will comment this one and use here inputs, inputs. Okay, uh, parser arcs, do you need any arguments? Yeah, I do. Okay, so if I run this file now, I should get just the input when it was input without any outputs, which would be much faster just to see how I can export the images without um, cropping it manually. Okay, so as you can see, that's the input image, and that's the same input image. That's fine. Uh, here we have, in utils, we have display image and load images. Probably we will work on display images. Can I go to definition from here? No? Okay, fine. We go back, utils, mm -hmm. display images. So here what's happening is that we get an outputs and inputs. And we also have is it color map? So I think if I disable is color map, color map is it like this? Nope, one word equals false. It should be like a black and white. So I will have the original and black and white images. Uh, meanwhile, it's running. I will keep going here. Um, yeah, like the original. Okay, fine. Um, here we have all images, that's like the total of all the images that we have here in the examples and inside it um, here we have the horizontal horizontal stack um, so I have images I would like to print 
the links of images to see that's actually an empty array. So while we are looping over all the outputs that we get, uh, we have input already there and we have um, uh, the rescaled output map. So let me, let me print it out. It should be like two. Um, I don't need to show anything for now, so I just need to see the result down here. And let's ignore this one because it's annoying. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thanks. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> Next step. Uh, this means that we every two is always added next to each other. So now I would like to have c equals zero and we are incrementing one every loop. And uh, what what image um, library we are using here? So I'm getting the images as as an array. Uh, I think, yeah. Wait a second. Here we have a display image, load image, and we have something for saving image. That's cool. And um, <clears throat> so basically, it gets um, image that from array where we have to put our image multiplied by two hundred fifty-five, and then we are saving it. So. What I'm going to do is, so I will say image images to zero, and again images one. What's wrong with this keyboard? Okay, and I will call this file. Um, image underscore I will put something here later but PNG and it should be the same but I have to find out which one is actually the depth map and which one is the original one which one is the RGB so let's put here also uh, our color and for pause I would like to add format C and C here uh, refers to our um, incremental whatever variable so next step, it will be that these data are saved outside here and I don't want to have this, so I will create a new output folder. Alrighty, here. And I will just put uh, like this. I will just ignore this one like here and let's add it here. And this one should be zero, and then um, backslash twice, and then sec. Like, um, I'm not happy with this, to be honest. That's not correct, but I'm just hacking it for now to make sure that's working. And let's see what's happening. Okay, cool. What happened? Uh, NumPy array does not have save. That means I, I need to have this one here. Sorry again. So we have to have this one, and we also have twice. And this will be I M. This will be I M two. And instead of montage, we are going to have this one here. And this one will be one. And that's it. Should work now. Hopefully. Oh, cool. So here we have an image, color, we have depth, we can check it out like this, so yeah, that's what I expected. Uh, okay, so now um, both of the images are saved, so now I can go back again and turn on the machine learning solution to run the model and predict the output, and again I will just change this here. And let's see how it's going. I will see you after it's done. All right, so now we are done. Here you can see we have the color image and next to it we have the depth. So each one has its own color and depth. Uh, that's how the depth map looks like.
So you can see the far is more brighter than the foreground, than the foreground. Um, and now we can just check it directly inside After Effects. So let's grab, for example, um, this one should be more clear, how it looks like. And I'm going to add the color. And then we have the depth map. And I should bring this up. Duplicated. So um, here I can just switch to Luma inverted matte. And here I'm going to use a lens blur, camera lens blur. Okay, so now it's fully blurred. And um, as you can see here, it can be, it can control using the levels. I add levels here. I can show you if I want to have uh, the background more, uh, more blurry than the foreground, I can just do it like this. Let me hide it. As you can see, the background should be more um, blurry than the foreground. Um, what else I can show it here? We can just play around, we can change the values, and you can see um, it can get closer and less. And that's using the depth. So even if it's like a still image, you can still detect or like the, 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 the depth of the image itself. So you can make it like, you know, this type of like out of focus things. Now it doesn't matter if you already export it from the camera or like on the renders in general, or if the camera uh, is already splitting it for you. Um, I mean, the result does not look nice on this example, to be honest. Um, but in general, just the technique of you can generate the depth map or depth map in general from, um, from an image. It's 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 really a smart idea, and most of the time I found that the research labs they're still limiting um, the outputs. Like you can see, it's like 32 by 240 pixels, um, because most of the time they are keeping the high resolution stuff for commercial use, or at the main time the the neural network only can accept that size. I mean. It might take much much longer time if you're working on a full HD frame. So sometimes they have a reason, a technical reason for it, and sometimes they are keeping it for their commercial purpose. If you want to have it as a plugin or a, a product in the, in the end. Um, yeah. So that was it for today. Um, let me know if you would like to create, um, for example, a plugin or uh, a tool inside Photoshop that we can do exactly the same with just double, like with two clicks, for example. And you can have this effect in Photoshop. So let me know if you would like that we make another video of creating a tool inside Photoshop that can do the same. Or um, whatever you'd like to see in the next time. Um, I have a plan to make uh, another video about the star transfer for the FX. Uh, from two minutes paper I showed it last time I already implemented it and uh, if you would like that we do it together again and see the result and so on we can do the same just showing it off how it works and so on and think how we can implement it into production um, until then uh, I wish you a pleasant day and see you next time bye bye <laughs>